What's going on, Show Nation? It's Movie with Movie Gaming TV. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. If you guys could drop a like or a thumbs up on this video if you guys liked it, I would really appreciate that as well. It would really help me out. Hit the subscription button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our MLB The Show 20 content that's going to be on the channel. I hope you guys are having an absolutely great day, and thank you guys so much for watching my videos. What's going on, Show Nation? It's Movie with Movie Gaming TV. This is a game that I actually played on stream yesterday versus Kluber uh, on Legend. So this is a very, very difficult game. And I was going back through the live com of this game. And to be honest with you guys, like I was cussing a ton. I was kind of like, I just didn't like the, how the live com was going. So I thought I would change it up. Thought I'd still bring in this gameplay, but I wanted to talk to you guys about a question I'm getting a lot right now. And that is, how do you hit on Hall of Fame? How do you, you know, a lot of people are asking me as they make the jump from All-Star to Hall of Fame, how do I hit better on Hall of Fame? So I thought I would go into that and kind of talk a little bit about that. First of all, once you guys get past Hall of Fame and do get into the World Series and do get a couple of these games on Legend, Hall of Fame is going to seem like absolute soft toss. So I know it's fast now. It was fast for me when I was going through it, so I completely understand but it's gonna feel like soft toss after you get through it and get to legend. It's gonna be really, really, really easy. And I wanted to talk about also some new metas and some things about uh, just kind of playing the game right now and some tricks that you can use to get better at playing right now. And you know, uh, the first, I see a lot of people that are saying like, I was 20 and 0 and now I'm 26 and I'm 26 and 10 or something like that. Like. They've been losing some more games. Well, first of all, when you're going up through those first couple games, you were playing probably most likely some easier opponents. Like, let's let's be honest. You're probably playing against some easier opponents. We all were. And now as you've moved up, you're playing against people that know what they're doing a little bit more. You're almost playing against yourself, so to speak. So one thing I've really noticed is we've got so many hitting tips videos out there now, so many pitching tips videos out there now. A lot of people, you know, you know, a lot of people ask me how do I, how do I get out of a slump, and I'll be like, you know, use the CB5 method, you know, take till you have two strikes. It's gonna make you really because if you're already swinging and in a slump, like you're approaching your at bat, like you have two strikes and you're swinging at bad pitches. And so, <laughs> let me get back to the point here. What I'm trying to say is, let's say you're up in like 700 division, all right? You're up in like 700 division. The guy you're facing is just taking every single pitch really you need to start attack you need to start attacking a lot more because you know what i mean by that is you need to get ahead in the count you need to throw some more strikes uh early because they're su they're in such take mode now to take pitches like anything close that what happens when you do that all right what happens when you do that is you get on your back foot and you're going to start to be late because you're letting the ball travel so far and you're so afraid to swing early in the count type of deal that you're gonna get behind or your time is gonna be off. So a lot of times, you know, I, I do I do swing a lot more than I should. Uh, I have more of a Vlad Guerrero approach to the plate than say like Carlos Santana or something like that. So just keep in mind, something that really helped me get through the last couple wins is just attacking the other player uh, from the pitching standpoint. You know, throwing them pitches that uh, early in counts, like I'm not gonna let you, I'm not gonna just sit and try to paint the corner on all these dots every single time and try to throw a dot every single time because i know you're just in take mode anyways you're going to take anything close on the on the dot why not why don't i just attack the zone and force you to swing the bat because that's really going to you know <laughs> that's going to put some more pressure on you that's going to get you into shorter bats that's going to get me ahead in the count even the you know you still want to be careful you know oh and two one and two you still have that waste pitch but a lot of people are just automatically taking that waste pitch that's what i think that's just it's just something to keep in mind. Now you still got to read your opponent. You know, are they, are they just swinging at whatever? You know, if they're just a lot of people in lower divisions are gonna just swing at whatever. They're gonna swing at every pitch. So when you're on the lower divisions, let's say like 300, 400, 500, even 600, this strategy is not gonna work as well. It's just not because they're going to be swinging at every pitch, and you need to take advantage of that with your pitching. You know, you don't have to just hit it in the zones. So you can more throw to those spots. But as you go up, people get a better eye. They're, you know, they're more locked in. They're trying to get the World Series. You're really going to want to try to hit the zone a little bit more if they're just you you can get a feel for that. You know what I mean? You can get a feel of they're just taking like crazy. And then what it's time to do is just it's time to attack the zone and get ahead. 
and then stay on offense with your approach because they're not going to know that you're doing that. Stay on your offense. Stay on offense with your approach. Let them throw a whole bunch of balls or try to like throw dots against you and just keep your approach. You know, keep walking and stuff like that. Keep keep all those tips in mind. But it's just something to think about. That's the way that you're going to come combat this new hitting method of everybody taking like you know everything good. You know, <clears throat> you know if you look at like something like. You know, if you look at something like my hitting tips videos, I'm pretty much telling you, look down the middle as much as possible. Look at the release from the pitcher's hands. Read the spin. You know, that is that is by far the one thing that I repeat to myself, even out loud, that helps me hit better is look at the pitcher's release point. Look at the spin out of his hand. Try to hit pitches in the middle to, to until two strikes. You know, take pitches until two strikes so you guys have a good approach. But... What I'm trying to say is like, if they're just going to take, you're going to be able to get free strikes. You're going to get ahead. That's really, really going to help you out. You're going to force them to swing the bat. And when they can get, they get you in like a three and one count. That's just, it's, it's terrible. It's really, really, really bad for, for you as a pitcher to get into a three and one count when they know you're going to have to groove one. And if you don't groove one, you're going to walk them, which is essentially the same as a base hit. So I just wanted to point that out there. That's, that's one thing that like, if you go back and watch that world series video, that I just put out when I made the World Series. That's one thing I, I said in the live com. I was saying to myself, I said to my chat, like, look, if we can hit, I know how to beat this guy, all right? I know what he's doing up at the plate. He's taking like crazy. He's taking anything close. And I know if I just throw him strikes and make him swing the bat, it's just not going to be, you know, it, it's just, it's going to be much easier for me to win. I'm going to be able to get ahead. And uh, it's just something to keep in mind, dude. You don't want people to, you don't want to be getting in a bunch of three and one counts. That's really going to help you win. And like I said, as far as the Hall of Fame pitch speeds, I mean, I know they seem fast right now, but they won't once you get to legend. It's just, it's way, way faster. Um, and you'll be able to, what's going to happen is like, let's say you make the World Series, right? And then you go back down to Hall of Fame after you've played a couple of games of legends, you know, face, face like a clue by face like a Forrest Whitley, like some really good pitching. You're going to go back down to Hall of Fame and it's going to have that same feel that it had, you know, in years past, specifically even like, let's just go back to like last year. Like when you played on Hall of Fame, either in like ESL or if you just played in Hall of Fame, you know, whenever, I mean, it, it was pretty easy to hit. If you were down four or five runs, the game wasn't necessarily over. When really good players played against each other, they could absolutely smash the ball like all over the place. Uh, nobody was ever out of the game. There's uh, a couple times I remember personally, like, be down five, six, seven runs in the eighth or the ninth. It's no problem. You know, you can, uh, you're going to be able to see the ball well enough that you're going to be able to see every single time it's a ball, see every time it's a strike. It's just right now, um, we've, we, you know, it's a new game. Everyone's been, a, you know, everyone has been used to veteran and all star, maybe from BR grinding. And you get up the Hall of Fame, they did up the pitch speeds a little bit. So just in general throughout the game in 1.4 and in uh, 1.5, I mean, the pitch speeds are up there, but I'm telling you, man, keep grinding, stay on that grind, get through Hall of Fame, get to Legend and play that. So what if you're saying like, you know, it's gonna, it might be a little bit until I get to Legend. It might be uh, a little while. This has been a really, a really tough thing. Find one of your friends that plays MLB The Show, all right? You know, no, I wouldn't even necessarily practice against the computer. I would find one of your friends that plays the MLB The Show or go into a stream and just be like, hey, I'm looking to play a Legend game versus someone. Is anybody interested? I'm trying to work on my game. I'm trying to get better at hitting. Go and play like a Legend game like that. Play a couple of them and you know play online so you kind of have latency and all that kind of stuff. Then go back and then play Hall of Fame again. It's going to seem way, way easier to hit. Legend is very, very difficult to hit right now, man. Your PCI is as small, like, this is like, who's up now? My cap, my cap has almost 100 vision, and his PCI is not very big at all. It's very difficult to go ahead and and make plays, you know, or it's, it's difficult to hit. I mean, that, that's just, that's just how it is. You really can't get away with, uh, you know, the good OKs, like, yeah, I get upset about good OKs. I really do, but it's I, this is kind of like one thing I really noticed during this game and playing this game against Blue Brown Legend is like good OK is not good enough. That's just not good enough timing. It's not good enough. You know, I know you get the OK from the PCI placement and all that kind of stuff, but like you really need to turn up in perfect, perfect stuff. Like you just really, really need a perfect, perfect stuff to just absolutely be, you know, 
that's gonna win you the game that's how people like rebel i i just i haven't seen him play in a while but that's just how i know that's how he's like 61 and 2 he's getting perfect perfects i know that's how kyle's way up there ranked they're getting perfect perfects they're not just getting good okay they might get them sometimes i know that, that that's how it goes sometimes in this game but i just know that's what i know i'm trying to focus on like to me getting a good timing is just not it's not good enough does that make any sense like i want to strive to get seven to eight perfect perfects a game at least um i you know you might get one or two during the game you just got to work on your game like i i'm not trying to to put out this video to say anything of like um god i don't know i'm not trying to disparage anyone or discourage anyone but just stay on that grind man you guys every, we're all, the game's barely been out everyone's gonna be able to get better and better I definitely wanted to bring you guys this video though to show you guys kind of like what it looks like to face Kluber right now on Legend, where you're going to have to get up to to be able to be a beast. If you have aspirations of being like a top 50 player this season, a top 100 player, I just want, I don't know, I just, I ended up getting a bomb here with Trout. You know, it, it's, it's going to be some work to play on Legend this year. There's going to be a lot of skill gap. Um, it's gonna be uh, a lot of fun Roly, This is a perfect example guys of me just attacking the zone because I know how hard it is to hit I'm not going to let him with the lead here I'm not gonna let him just sit back and take pitches on me and I'm gonna get ahead in the count even Owen 2 I'm throwing something that I'm trying to hit the strike zone with I'm trying to make him swing the bat You know, that's that's the way that you guys are gonna combat You know people taking all these pitches once you get up to like 700 800 um, if the person is just really freaking good, like they just smash everything, it is what it is. Uh, I don't, it's really hard to say this because like, I don't want you to just always hit the zone a hundred percent of the time, every single game type of thing, but just make a read. If they're being really selective, start to throw more, you know, fastballs. And then once it will not even fastballs, but throw more in the zone. And then when you notice them again, starting to swing at first pitches and stuff like that then you can take a little bit of uh an advantage but it's just uh it's just one of those things that's really really going to help you out because you're now you're going to be getting ahead and counts so you're going to be pitching well and you still have that good same approach on the other side that's going to really help you out you know what i'm saying you're still going to be taking pitches they're not going to be thinking oh i need to get ahead in the count i'm they're going to be thinking oh i need to dot every single pitch which isn't easy to do in this game one thing that I also want to talk about is like the control rating of pitchers, all right? Like Roly has amazing control in this game. He's got really, really good control. You look at the control rating in the attributes screen of a player, that control rating isn't for every single pitch. Uh, I don't know if I've explained this in 20 so far, but like the pitches aren't in order for a reason. Like they'll go, I'm looking at like Forrest Whitley's right now, just on a screenshot of my computer. It says like sinker, change up uh slider 12 6 and a cutter the same he does not have the same control on the cutter as he does the sinker it just he doesn't have that i was trying out that brendan mckay and uh you know he's pretty cool he can hit like shohei otani can he's one of the new prospect cards but the thing is like the only pitch you really can control is the fastball his other pitches like his curveball his changeup, and his cutter they're probably gonna go wherever they're gonna go that's just how it is with that card you know you can try to spot it the best you want but he just doesn't have the control rating in those pitches that's one thing i don't know if a lot of people know but it's one thing to really um you know you can see it even when you go to my Corey kluber video that i put out about you know tips about facing Corey kluber you can see it in that video there's different uh control ratings for different pitches End up getting the win here. I know this is kind of a strange video, but I just wanted to talk about some different hitting and pitching metas that are going on that will help you win games right now. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.